Ryan Duffy. Down the line, down the line. Go on. Oh, fuck you, Liam Nichol! Try Yeah! Oh, my God, get in! Get in! What a finish, by the way. Told you, Polish party, mate. How many minutes per goal is it? Right, Colin, Just get thanks. your ass sat down. We're going live right now. <laughs> oh, Mark. Welcome to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Lawrence Conley and Colin Watt. Colin, bask in your glory, son. What Colin, can I say, guys? I called it at half time. Get the tea cake on, and he scores. And what a contribution he had. I mean, we're. We're out of breath here, we've been celebrating Klamala's last minute goal. Social distanced celebrations oh, yes, were definitely. rife in this studio. And there he is, Lee Griffiths, that means so, so much, doesn't it? I mean, he had that chance just beforehand, uh, uh, just at the corner, where it came off the St Johnston player and went wide, so um, he certainly looked a threat. I thought it was a wrong move to bring Edward off, but been calling for Lee Griffiths for half time and he's... He's rewarded us 2 0. I said 2 0 at the start of the game. I've called the, the Griff. <laughs> and they went to lottery numbers, get in touch. And also, when uh, Clamalla came on, I had said that maybe Edward would be rested today, Clamalla would come on and, and start the game. When he came on there, I wasn't convinced. I wasn't sure what he was going to give. What about his work rate? The fact that he wasn't willing to, to lie on the ground, he got back up. What a finish. Hey, listen, how many minutes is it a goal for that boy? It must be about a goal every 40 minutes or something. Some do it there will be able to tell us right. once, but um, he's been. And how's prolific. that only a yellow card tackle on him? What would the guy need to have done? Use a chainsaw? I to tell get you, what. Off, you know, it is, it is out and out ridiculous performance, but as referee day. And the ref was refing for us to drop points. There's I mean, no doubt about it. It's a, a football insomniac thing to call people out, but I'm bringing this over to the Axon Live Day. Nick Walsh, we are calling you out. That is absolutely dreadful performance today. I mean, Murray Davidson should have been sent off. Liam Gordon there at the end should have been sent off. As you're saying, Lance, I don't know what would actually have had to happen to get a red card in that game. Remember at half time we were saying there, Colin, that uh, St Johnston came out not only to defend, because I've always said you know, there's teams out there that need to do that. They need to defend with their lives just to get a point, just to stop the, the Celtic steamroller, right? And I get that. But see when they come out and it's the roughhouse tactics that St Johnston employed today, you need protection. Frimpong, I'm surprised he played 90 minutes. He's he was booted listen, all over the pitch. Teams can only do that as much as the ref allows them to do it. And it is teams defending with life, but they've got to p- play right to the edge because they're not, they're, they aren't as good as footballers. So you've got to play right to the edge. And it's just that the, the ref has left that, that edge way outside the laws of the game. And do you know what? You're spot on. How Klamala actually get back up to then have the composure after being basically taken out? It was a siphon tackle. And then have that composure to put it past the goalkeeper. It was absolutely outstanding. I mean, it was a really poor performance in general from Celtic today. But when you get two last minute winners like that, you're, you're quite happy. You Just look at happy. the joy on wee Griffith's face there, you know. What, what a terrible well. head kick though. For Griffith as well, although it wasn't in target, you know. He's got the talent. Big Tom when he come on as well. Well, can I just say, I'm going, pick that up. I'm going to pick that up, Lawrence, right? So, Tom Rogic and Lee Griffiths come on uh, to the field of play. And what I said at the time is that was an axon wet dream call. And we've been talking about that for about two months. And we get told to shut up about it as well. <laughs> Several times. But were we not told that uh, those players are in the past? We did. Awesome. We were told to get over it. Those players were in the past. <laughs> and they came on today, as you say, Roger, a, a little bit less so, but he showed signs. He showed signs, Lawrence. Well, did and, we, um, we not have the ball quicker with him? He was beating his man. You know, there was a bit more impetus with him and Griff on the park. Yeah. And I think that's what we, we were missing. We were missing that desire to move things Aye. quicker. Or maybe not the desire, we were missing the ability to move it quicker for periods of the game. But I tell you what, and there'll be plenty of comments, I'm sure, saying this. Brown... We were all saying, what was the need to bring Brown on? <laughs> I said it at half time to bring him on. When he came on. Colin, you're like Nostradamus, eh? <laughs> it's br- see if people you know? listen to me. I mean, I'll get a direct line to Lenny eventually. Um, but generally, when Brown came on. So, what did he do? Let's talk about what he did when he came on, Colin. So, Brown, when he came on, it was as if everybody had to up their game. It was like the teacher had come back after being out for so long. The, the stand in teacher had gone. In came Brown, in came the leader. And everybody's game just seemed to up that wee bit more. Um, Klamala was chasing down everything. Griffiths, Brown, we're talking about that ball over the top as if it was like the, the yeah. goal at Tynecastle. 
there was just an impotence on getting forward. It was almost like the Dundee United game all over again. We didn't stop as we got into the last 10 minutes. We pushed and pushed and pushed. They said it on commentary as well. Celtic were forcing it and forcing it. And do you know what? See if you're the attacking team and you're there to play football. Nine times out of ten, you'll get the result you're looking for. Tell you, wee Paddy, he just runs though. See that ball that came in and he ran across the defender. Fair enough, he didn't get the right contact on it, but a boy makes the right runs, doesn't he? And he, he never he does. stops. He does, Lawrence. And you know what we've got now, and this is what it's why it's so important that we come out of this uh, transfer window with all the top players in place. That's the depth of the squad that often you require uh, to go through a season like this season unscathed. We're looking down at Barley a zero zero. Uh, draw but, there, right? Well, you used the phrase there through a season unscathed. Jeremy Fringpong, how you came out with that game unscathed? I know. But when are the refs in Scotland going to offer him any protection? Colin, did you say someone at half time you were checking online? Someone at half time actually said in the media that he was having a good game. The ref, yeah, the, the, was, the, that was a scandalous performance from yeah, that referee. It was shocking. Nick Walsh is a fourth official. Well, the fact that he got this refereeing job shows the standard of refereeing that we've got in Scotland. I know through some of the the old referees that we know. Um, that they know that the standard of refereeing in Scottish football is terrible. You look at the, the guys are getting fast tracked up into this league. Now, when you've got quality players and you're trying to attract quality players like Ryan Sess and Young and players like that, if they take one look at how someone with a bit of attacking prowess like Frimpong's being treated, no wonder they're going to Germany. Just, um, t- t- just on something. that point, we've spoken about Sess and Young during the week. Call. It looks as though he's uh, tying up a deal over in Germany, isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's, ho- he's heading over to Hoffenheim for a medical tomorrow, which mm-hmm. is a bit disappointing. But we do have some breaking news to, to give to you. Um, it looks as though Robert Snodgrass will be making his way to Celtic Park on a season long loan deal. Um, 33 years old, a bit of a winger. We're not playing wingers at the minute, so what do you think he can bring to the side? I think he's a big Celtic fan. I know he's done a lot for Celtic supporters, the tragedy down in Barrafield. I know Snoddy setting up jerseys and stuff for it. I think he's an exciting player. He brings goals. Undoubted talent. He's going to give us options, I think. And you said we're not playing wingers. Is it because we don't have any of his quality to put it out there? And sometimes when we're playing a 3 5 2, you know, and Taylor ever needs a rest. You could maybe shove Snowdy out there and cover, I don't know. I wonder if it could be to do with the Forest injury as well. When mm. the Forest could be, is going to be out for a bit longer than we anticipated, so he's another option. When we looked at that bench today, that bench was actually very strong. Yeah. Look at the five guys that came off the bench. You're looking at Kamala, Griffiths, Brown, Rogic, and who am I missing? The, the fifth substitute? Christy. Christy. <laughs> How could you forget? A <laughs> Co- couple, couple of points to, to take from that, Colin. Firstly, yes, uh, very strong bench. How well did Lennon use his substitutes? Marvellous again. Marvellous. Uh, well, I still think we could have made them just that wee bit earlier. I still think we're, hang- we're hanging on and last minute goals, are, they're not good for the old heart, by the way, but we're eventually going to pass just out Just take them. me back to the centenary <laughs> season, listen, Lawrence. Lenny just likes the drama. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's been listening to us at some... At home, after games, and he's like, you know what, Griffin, Rogic, these boys are right, let's get them on. That's well, what was on in the dressing room at half time, it was just us. <laughs> and, and you're also looking at uh, Ryan Christie, and I spoke after the game with Stevie Mullen, after the, the game on Thursday night there, about how everything creative that came through Celtic came through Ryan Christie. We were speaking there in the second half about when you're that type of player, Lawrence, and you're taking the risk to try and craft an opening, in a game like this where it's so, so tight, you're going to play the ball out the park, which you did a few times. Mm. People focus on that a lot. Christie is a creative force in that Celtic well, side. Without doubt, it's not all about ball retentions. If you're taking a high-risk payoff, it is high risk. So the risk is that you're going to lose it, it's going to go out the park, you're not going to find a jersey. But the payoff's high. You know, you find someone in a box and it's back in it. Mm-hmm. So it can't always be the safe pass. Because we crucify some players for the safe pass, like Greg Taylor, oh, he'll cut it back, or he'll play it across. We need players that are going to take risks. It's just getting the right blend, isn't it? I've talked about taking risks. If you look at the first goal, Ayers just about outside the 18 yard box when he picks a ball up, and he holds it off so well. He's got the two players nice around feet. him, and eventually finds a pass out to Al Hamid. And the cross for Al Hamid shows why he is a full back first and foremost. Straight onto Griffith's head. It is the kind of I don't think it's a goal Edward would score because I don't think he would be in that position. Um, and Griffiths is just in the right place at the right time. 
it, see if I've been a wee man, he scores a lot of goals well, through his head, doesn't he? Tell you that cross well, Hammond, you said he's like the fullback, that's why he's a fullback. I think it's probably a better cross than from Pong or Taylor put in all game, wasn't it? That's probably a best ball in. Ah, it was decisive uh, as well, Lawrence, you know, it was it was needed at that right. moment in time. There was no room for, for any kind of error. Going back to your point that you made there about Ayer, Colin, that kind of play, that silky play up there on the right-hand side, wouldn't look at a place in Milan. Let's hope that that isn't <laughs> the case in a couple of days' time. Um, do you see, I mean, obviously we've come through the, the qualifiers and we're in the, the group stages of the Europa League and we're all delighted about that. Uh, Lennon came out after, Neil Lennon came out after the game and spoke about how he was confident that Edouard would still be a Celtic player after the transfer window closes. Do you see us moving anybody on? And I don't mean Kundai Benyu, who, uh, you know, the news was broken yesterday. He's away to where? Wildstone? Wildstone Raiders. Do you remember yeah. the old Wildstone Raider? You want some? I'll give it to you. That guy. That's where he's away to. So we know really? he's, got, yeah, he's got some security guards down there Brilliant. that will look after him. But the big names, we're talking Christie, Ayer and Cham, Edward. They will all still be at Celtic Park come Tuesday. I think so. I'd be surprised if they move on now. Um, I think you'd have heard about it before now if that was going to be the case. But we I also gri- don't. Griff's getting interviewed there on Sky Sports. We can't hear him, but it's just great he looks to see the wee man with a smile on his face. Yep. Man in a match. <laughs> 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 come on, come on! But hey, listen, I tell you what, I don't think there'll be big names going out, but I'd expect to see big names come in. Well, what's two. your thoughts? I don't think we we finished what you were saying about Snodgrass. What is your thoughts on a player coming in at that age, Lawrence? You know, it's a, another well, stopgap. It's a loan deal. What, what was it? You even said about a thirty-year-old coming into Celtic Park would be better signing John Spencer or something. That's right. You, you know, that. so I don't think age is the barrier, is it? The boy's a talented player. Is going to add something to your squad. Going back to that, I don't think you'll be the only one coming in tomorrow. I don't think so, Colin. I think there'll be more. I reckon too. But um, going back to what you said there about Snodgrass, we had recently we had one of his teammates in here, his ex teammates, uh, Joe Hamill, who spoke about the the way that Snodgrass approaches his profession. And he's one of these guys who's a complete professional. You hear a lot of the pranks and everything that he plays, but in terms of the actual uh, preparation for games, fitness, diet, all that kind of stuff. So although he's 33, he's one of these guys who can come in and he's still a top flight player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, but without doubt, he's, he knows the club inside out as well. I touched on it, he's done a lot for kind of Celtic community in East End. I think he's a great addition. Mm-hmm. He came in for this, you know, when we're going for 10 in a row and a fourth and fifth treble in a row, I think, you know, he, he must be over the moon to be the possibility of joining us tomorrow. Eh? Not, ah. even, not even that, I mean, he's a, another Premiership player. Do you know what I mean? We're attracting a, another yeah. Premiership player. Mm-hmm. I okay, it's a Scottish internationalist. People will come out and say he's past his best. Look, if you can still play in the Premiership at thirty three week in week out, then I think you've you've certainly got something to offer to us at Celtic. Just as Lee Griffiths is getting interviewed there, I can actually see why you won man of the match. If you looked at the stats that came up, one goal, six touches in the opposition box, thirteen tackles. You don't think a Lee Griffiths is somebody that's coming back and winning the ball, but he actually did link up the play very well. Three shots on goal, one in the back of the net. Look, I, I see having him back, I, it's, it's a cliche that you try and not use, but it's almost like having a new <laughs> signing. <laughs> Listen, money a match, maybe, but Frimpong should get some kind of medal for surviving that treatment. Well, you know, you know it's, it's like if it's no money in a match, it's some kind of bravery award. We've been it? waxing lyrical for uh, the best part of 15 minutes here about the performance, which is quite right. But let's go back to the performance of the, the referee in that game and the performance of St. Johnson because I'm astounded, right, that uh, after the first half where there was two occasions where Davidson should have uh, been shown a red card, he continues it into the second half and it's until late in the game that he's actually given a booking. Yeah, and the actual booking that he gets on uh, El Yunusi 70 minutes into the game was the least offensive challenge but, of all of them. Totally, but what, what about that time Frimpong gets filled out wide it keeps going, mm. it gets filled just outside the box, and then the ref calls it back. I know. And you're going, we, we, we'd rather have the free kick kind of 22, 23 yards out than 35 yards out on the wing. It, the ref was just... <laughs> I tell you what, but I mean, we've still not seen that two-footed tackle in the first half again. Do you Nobody expect showed it? it back again. No, but I thought the, the coverage was particularly poor. Oh, we said that a few times. Yeah, coverage was yeah. poor. But I tell you what, I bet you sports seen this out. All the controversial tackles... And their highlights package. Well, I'd be interested to see because I think 
well, I kind of hope. Well, there's the first goal back again. That <laughs> retention <laughs> from Ayer is outstanding, and the cross is right where you want it to be. It's between the penalty spot and the six yard box. The second that leaves me. his head, he's away celebrating. Look at Griffiths, Griffiths is unmarked here as look, well. Look, 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 look at his movement. Well. His movement as well, Colin was brilliant. But, oh, fantastic! But, but you watch that St Johnson number six. He has a look at Griffin. Doesn't go to him. He's totally unmarked in that box. If you're a St Johnston fan, you'll be raging at that. Oh, especially as the number six spots him and decides not mm. to go to him. You know, you're like... Talking of raging, 47 minutes into the game, two minutes into the second half, Lawrence and I clashed about uh, a chance at the back post <laughs> where I'm screaming at Taylor because he's the wrong side of his man. That was the miss of the second half. Definitely. Oh, definitely, aye. But St Johnston had two players free. Stevie May was free. So Iron has to go over and try and cover Stevie May. Then Taylor's coming over to cover Ayer's man. You, you, you were like Celtic defence was all at sea and you were going what is going on here how did they never mind getting one man free you know they get two free when I was into the box Rem- it's, it was one of the um, you know heads in the, in the hands kind of moments almost but look, look at how we touch from Ireland. we're, we're looking yeah. we're <laughs> looking at the contribution of Lee Griffiths and it takes me back to a game last season Colin um, on a rainy night at Celtic Park where we're uh, 1-1 one, one against Hamilton and we brought on Griffiths he was just a nuisance we ended up getting the winning goal he was mm-hmm. a nuisance all night he came on and he made a difference now we've been talking about that impact particularly against sides like St Johnson who are yeah. defending you know and he'd done it well as I said to you I mean I said at a half time I'd have brought Lee Griffiths on um, and I'm not you did to be him. fair yeah <laughs> I'll not mention it another 10 times before the broadcast's <laughs> over but he has he's a different type of striker like, he is a striker that suits playing up front on his own. When Klamala came on, I said to you guys, I don't think he's a one-up top striker. I really feel as if he's better playing off somebody. Now, but when Lee Griffiths gets it, look how he just ghosted in for that goal. Totally unmarked. He it's makes good. a space. Klamala's a different type of striker. Prefers a ball over the top. Lee Griffiths can build up a play. Um, I don't know if two of them will build a partnership together, but, I mean... It's, it's four options we've got now. Oh, definitely. I, I, I mean, I think the Griff, Griff, you can just say... Just you play, he's that talented, just you play. I think Clamala needs to be an assistant. Griff is just so talented and natural that he doesn't really rely on the system. He can sniff out the opportunities. You know, he might be told to lead it, but he might go, actually, I'm going to drop off, pick the ball in. Griff has just got the natural talent to sniff out chances, hasn't he? Well, here it is. The the Axon grenade's about to be thrown, Paul. Are you ready for this? Yep. We always said, if Lee Griffiths comes back and scores goals, he would be the third-choice striker. Now it. both him and Klamala scored today mm. So where is Lee Griffiths in the pecking order? I think when we This takes us nicely on to the Rangers game When we go uh, to play Rangers The question is Do you play two strikers up front? Not two up front Do you play two strikers up front? Of course we've been starting with Edward and El Yunusi Playing just off him How do you start would be the question And I think the important answer to that Is you play with two strikers And for me it's Edward and Griffiths Well I think two strikers definitely Depending if a jet is fit the thing about Eddie and Griff is they can play strikers or they can drift, they can change in it. Mm. Because I think Ayet is the penalty box poacher. Klamala needs in the system. He, he, he needs to, he's a striker that needs to play yeah, alongside I mean, somebody. Yeah. Whereas Ed and Gr- Edward, and Gr- they just give you so much more, don't they? I tell you what would game. be a good partnership if you're looking for Klamala to build on up with, with Rogic. Rogic will play that ball through oh, to him. I, the way he'll control it, bring the ball down, he'll play it into Klamala to then go past the defender. But... As we're going into this Rangers game, a Yeti, having been injured, I wouldn't risk him to start. Great option coming off the bench. Aye. For me, if you're going two up top, it's got to be um, Edward and Griffiths. And I, I say now, Lee Griffiths is your third choice striker. I, right. I think you start with Eddie and Griff. They just give you so much more. Because you know, one of them can play as a striker, one can drop, they can both play as strikers. It's so much more fluid on the park. They're definitely, from what we've seen, the two most talented Footballers of the strikers. Yep. I don't think we're going to start with two strikers against Rangers. We will start with two up front, but there won't be, like you say, Griffiths or Klamala and Edward. A Yeti, if he's if he's fit, do you throw him in? He won't be match fit, so I think he's a better option on the bench. Can you start a game like that with three strikers on the bench? I mean, that's the that's the idea. That's the you've, question. You've got nine. So you've got nine positions on the bench mm-hmm. you've got five subs that can come on we've seen we needed the five subs today to actually get the three points right so let's utilise the squad this is what we keep going on about and I keep harping on about having three players that can play in each position El Hamid showed they can play wide right today <laughs> I have shown they could play <laughs> wide right today uh, I mean mm. let's 
if we've got three strikers on the bench and we're at, we're playing with Edward and Elanusi up front, then you can change the system. You can go with two recognised strikers up front. You can go with three up front if you need it. But for me, if Lee Griffiths is coming back, even if he only gives us 60 minutes, I'd still rather he was running at Hollander and at whoever else they've got at centre-half than Klamala. That's a think, bold one. So you're, you're going to start Lee Griffiths against Rangers? Well, he's got two and a half weeks to get his fitness up. I'm delighted he's not in the Scotland squad because, by the way, three games in two weeks, we're going to come back with at least one injury out of that. That's my prediction. Oh. It doesn't matter who it's for. Um, so go with it. I mean, the wee man wants to play football. You can see that's all he wants to do. Look how happy he was scoring today. Everybody else as well. Yeah. We're willing him to score. We were willing him to do well, weren't we? Oh, I right. mean, I couldn't believe it at 75 minutes when the dream Axon substitution took place and the two of them came on. I thought you were winding me up when you see Roderick's coming on as well. Um, a couple of minutes later, we've seen the worst of the referee uh, refereeing decisions where Frimpong takes on four or five St. Johnson players. That they take a nibble at him early on, he's skived at the edge of the box and they pull it back. Even Andy Walker couldn't understand the thinking behind that. Then Duffy, 81 minutes in, it's a free header. You're beginning to wonder, is this going to be our day? Because if you want the boy to fall to anybody's head, it's Duffy's. And six minutes to the end, Christian Roger, both taken out the play. The referee doesn't even give a free kick. So we're looking at that thinking, we're, we're going to have to break the, de- the deadlock here because anything that gets thrown into that Celtic box is going to end up as a penalty. I said it. With to you guys and I'll say it on the air as well if that was a performance where Rangers were playing St Johnston today and that referee gave everything against Rangers he would never referee another Rangers game but we have to come out and make a statement about that I don't know what Neil Lennon's saying in his press conference right now um, he's probably talking about how good we played um, which is a typical Neil Lennon response but something has to be said for that refereeing performance and for the guys on the radio that are saying that the referee had a great game Ah, nonsense. I just, Listen, even nonsense. as a neutral it was abysmal. watching that, you'd, you would see it. I mean, it was it a abysmal call. I'll tell you what, see if Griff hadn't got a free header and a St Johnson player had jumped against him, would anyone have been surprised if the Red had been given a free kick against Griff? You know, uh, it, it, it was that kind of way the refs just giving the decisions to him. You're looking and going, Phew. We spoke about it, Murray <clears throat> Davidson. How many tackles did they have to put in before he was eventually booked? Three shockers. It was three shocking. shockers that I counted. There might have been other niggles as well, Colin, you know, but there was three terrible tackles. That one with Liam Gordon at the end, he mm-hmm. literally, he oh, studs go into Kamala's ankle. If Kamala has come out of that unscathed, Listen, I'm impressed. He might be injured. He might actually be injured. We're talking about who do you play against Rangers. The character shown by Klamala there, a player who I've been quite hard on, quite mm-hmm. harsh on, admittedly, um, and even when he missed a chance there in the, in the first half, and you you were standing up for him, Colin or, or Lawrence, and I, you know, I was getting on about Klamala's not going to do yep. it for Celtic. What happened there? The, the actual strength of character, where it would have been easy for him to stay down, right? Aye. He got up, and the finish was brilliant. So fair play to him. The question was asked um, when Klamala started coming in and scoring. Griffiths was unavailable for selection. Does that make Klamala the third choice striker? Well, yes. But now Lenny has a brilliant headache because he's got four strikers who are all terrible. It doesn't get any better in replay, does it? How does he look when he's going away celebrating? He looks all right, but look at that. It's a terrible tackle. That's a straight red every day of the week. Terrible tackle. I think the only thing that helps Klamala here is he's actually on the turn. As he gets tackled, Aye, kind of the way he lands, Aye, the if, way he he's, lands if yeah. he's running flat and his two feet are kind of on the ground, that could be a leg breaker. That no. is absolute. How he only gave a yellow card for that is beyond me. I mean, Kevin Davidson, if that's how he's lining his teams up, I mean, it's dangerous. I don't know, play, isn't it? It's shocking. It's dangerous. They've been it's the dirtiest control. team we've played this season, and I don't mind saying that. St. Johnson have been the dirtiest teams but, Celtic have come I mean, up against. Teams you can only be as dirty as the ref allows you to be. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. And is that the worst referee performance we've seen this season? Oh, that's, a, diff- that's a difficult one. It's yeah, possibly. That's a difficult one. Oh, I mean, Let's have a look at some of the say? comments coming in via Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on what has been uh, a kind of last minute, uh, becoming quite regular, uh, going back to the centenary year, yeah, boss, <laughs> last minute celebration to change the mood of the camp in here. Uh, Glasgow Road out of jail. I feel as though we did get out of jail there. Um, but it's brilliant that we've got the players and the personnel to call on when you're up yep. against it. I'm going to go back to a point Colin made. Yeah, Griffiths gets the man of the match, but see the way Brown uh, performed when he came mm. on was absolutely impeccable. Captain's performance. Mm-hmm. That's what you want from them. That's all we ask for. When we, you hear about, uh, when you come on and you criticise Brown and people come out and say, oh, you're a hater, you're a hater. No, we just know that he can give so much more. Even at 35, he's got the ability to do so much more. And... 
his performance when he came on today was the brown of old. It was getting in, dominant, get the ball, control the, Making f- things control the play, yeah. yeah. Trying to make the, create the chances himself. Uh, I think it was a, a great. And do you know what? Maybe that's his role going forward. Seeing these games when we're maybe. It is now, now with like 25 minutes to go. Maybe that is where you do need Brown. Yeah. And if you are looking to uh, phase him out throughout the season, a 25 minute performance. That's, that's all you need from him. Now, after uh, Ferenc Varos, I was very critical of the, the lineup, and I blame Neil Lennon for it, and I, I stick by that. After a, a performance like that today, you look at the way that he's managed Scott Brown, mm-hmm. right? Because he's not been dropped, he's been rested two or three weeks ago, it would have looked as though he'd been dropped. The way that he's managed Griffiths back into the side, the way that he's managed um, Rogic back in after it looked as though he was on his way out, right? And the way that he managed the game today, I think all credit to Neil Lennon. Well, you've talked about Danny McGrain should write a book about the managers he served under, and you. And every time you talk to Danny, it's about how underrated Neil Lennon is. Yes, <clears throat> you know what I mean. So it'd be interesting to see that bit because I reckon Lennon would be right up there in Danny's estimations. I would. I would have to say, right up until probably the final substitutions, and I'm not just talking about the brown one. I think the one bringing on uh, Griffiths and Rogic. I think he started to realise that what he'd laid out wasn't the best plan for the team today. I think if we hadn't had the ability to make those changes, we probably would have seen out a, a nothing each draw today. Um, it could have been worse, I mean, after the, the instant where the two years were almost scrapping over Taylor or Ayer. But we were socially distanced, so we weren't oh, able to do that. Yeah, exactly. But verbal scrapping. Um, Lawrence is a big fan of Taylor. There's n- I mean, there's no, nothing wrong with that. I just felt that in that, particular uh, moment his positional positional play was poor I think Taylor is more suited to be a left back than a left attacking full back you see it when he goes forward a lot of the times he'll he'll never take on a player but if he gets a chance he'll put a ball over but when they double up on him he's not going to get that ball over so his first instinct is to pass the ball back and to keep the ball which at times isn't a bad thing but when you're struggling and really trying to get a goal Going back the way doesn't help us. One of the big things, and again, I'm not going to use any um, opportunity to criticise Celtic players after that victory. Uh, one of the things I think where it falls down with Taylor in an offensive sense is that he, he fails to make a, a quick pass. He puts the foot in the ball, he looks about, and he's very ponderous. Uh, when you look at the situation where Ayer plays in El Hamid, you know, there's an instinct there to get the ball over. I th- and I don't think that uh, Taylor's got that at the moment. Do you know what I think one of Taylor's flaws is? And it's not actually a flaw in him and He's kind of compared to Frimpong and they're two totally different Pong. players. Like Frimpong is quick, he gets past his man, he's driving forward and that's just his impotence. See if you put them on a defensive scale and you're pushed back for 90 minutes, Frimpong's not going to give you the same performance that Greg Taylor's going to give you. But when we're playing, we generally have the vast per, uh, amount of the ball so mm. we're going forward all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're rating Greg Taylor on is his performance going forward, not so much at the back. And you're comparing them to Fring Pong on the other side and it, it's not fair on him to be well, fair but I guess that's just the way it is when you play for Celtic, isn't it? He gets compared to Fring Pong and his pre- predecessor Tierney. Aye, because Tierney was the same I thought you were going to say, po- gonna say Paul and Golly. Paul and Golly was his predecessor, <laughs> no? Listen, he is wiped from my memory. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, Tierney's a £25 million pound player. Tierney's? Well, Tierney. Oh, I thought you said Taylor. No, <laughs> you pushing no, it no, 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 no. Give, give him a few seasons. And, and Tierney was uh, cheap at that price. You know what I mean? I thought, you know, Arsenal got a really good buy at that they price. They did. They certainly did. Uh, Greg was under two million, was he, for us? Around about two million. They were there about, so. Aye. Yeah. So. But then again, he, Tierney was more of a fullback than what Taylor was. He had that 30 yard boss where he could yeah. keep up his speed. He could just bust get back. And Taylor doesn't have that boss to do it over 20, 30 yards and just. No. Just burn guys off with his pace, he doesn't have it. Tierney did have frailties in his defending, but with the teams he's playing for, you don't really see that. I mean, I think the, the big one was the uh, Liverpool game the other night. You've seen it where his kind of defensive frailties came out because you've got a Liverpool side attacking at him and he's kind of pinned back. But give him 20 yards of space, as you're saying, with an open park, he'll get down there and he'll get a crossover, no bother. And that's 
generally what will happen when you play for a Celtic or an Arsenal? I've been looking through some of the comments coming in and sharing them with the viewers as well, Colin, and uh, there's a lot of love out there for Lee Griffiths, and I think there always has been from the Celtic support. It's fantastic to see him back, scoring goals and smiling and celebrating. Did Barca I say boy. I that? Yeah, you might have mentioned it. <laughs> Barca boy um, reminds us uh, that Klamala is a tank of a boy. I think that's what it comes down to. You know, he got so much credit during the pre-season, didn't he, uh, mm-hmm. Klamala, about his conditioning and the hard work that he put in. And, you know, that is that is the margins. Sometimes well, it's just a few percent here and there. His condition, his ability to get back up and finish that, that chance I mean, was incredible. That's more Fair play to him. An NFL tackle, isn't it? Aye, it was, but there was a few, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, there was a few of them today. Gary Doonan is giving credit to Neil Lennon for his subs. Brilliant again. Cannot argue with that, Gary. Um, I think that, you know... We had a wee chat with Colin beforehand and uh, we get feedback both online and from our respective friends, if we're allowed to speak to them and (laughs) things like that, associates. And uh, people sometimes say, oh, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't criticise Celtic. I don't subscribe to that. I think that, you know, if you don't, if you don't criticise the club that you love and support, you get into a situation, Lawrence, which you'll remember well, where a board can sometimes get stagnant and the fans allow them to, to become stagnant. We were in that situation in the late 80s and early 90s where nothing was questioned at all. It was almost too late. Mm. In fact, we've been in it before. My dad used to tell us about it when Jock Steen came back. The front of Celtic Park was like a row of demolished houses, broken windows, no money at the club, the board were picking the team. You know, and obviously we know Rangers ran two teams through through the war, but only club in Britain would be able to do that. And but Celtic, you know, they nearly get re- relegated. They won very little, the Coronation Cup. And then, you know, obviously, Steen comes back and what a period of success. But that's when he turned over charge from the board and pointed out things that, you know, didn't work. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we repeated the cycle. Let's hope we don't have to repeat it again. You know, we need to be wary of it, don't we? We need to be looking how to improve and always want to improve. Doing. And so everything, uh, everything we say, Lawrence, in, in relation to Celtic, if it is a criticism, is because we want the best for the club. We don't yeah. have an agenda. Well, we don't know everything that goes on behind the scenes and we don't always know the figures. We've got to say, pro- you know, without doubt, the best managed football club fiscally and on the park, I think, and commercially, doesn't mean we can't be better. You know, we, all, we, 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 we and we take on board that, you know, Law wants us to be better. He might take a bit of stick. You know, everybody at the club wants to be better, but, you know, there's going to be difference, differences of opinion how we achieve that. I tell you what, I think it goes back to something you've said before, Paul, when... Ronnie Ave, sorry, not Ronnie Dialeth, but when Brendan Rodgers took over, there was almost this strife for perfection that came from the Invincible season, mm-hmm. where every drop point was a prisoner. And to be fair to Neil, since he's came back in, I think his win ratio is sitting in the high 80%. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. It is a great okay, performance from him so far, but um, there is it's almost a... It's like a worst nightmare to drop points. Today would have been a complete disaster. I said that about 10 minutes to the end, didn't I? I said this is going to be a... days if we drop points today. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Rangers will go on and win this game later on today. I think they'll win it comfortably. You've touched on Lenny's win rate. I think it's the... Since he came back his second spell, it's the best win rate any Celtic manager. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that is. absolutely. Now, Starman, see the refs are standing out big time because there are no fans on their backs. So all decisions are there for all to see. It's an interesting point. Um, it's not us being paranoid. We're sitting here, nine league wins in, on the trot, league title wins on the trot. We're not being paranoid. Yeah. We're pointing it out. We've just won a game 2 nothing, and we're pointing it out. The refereeing performance today was abysmal. So, you could easily give him four red cards there. Easily. You know, game would have been in danger of getting abandoned, but you know, but could easily have given four red cards. I, but I tell you what, the, the viewers got a point there because I think I said it as well. See if you're at Celtic Park in front of sixty thousand, and Davidson puts that tackle in in the first half, he's off the park. Oh, but there was another thing coming in here. They want to stop the ten, and you saw uh, under the Mowbray season how you know Rangers needed to win to keep going as a as an entity, and the amount of decisions. I mean, Remember the game at Ibrox, it was about five or six penalties we should have got. I think Maloney picked mm. up a card, yep. another player picked up a card in the box for diving. And you, so I think it's the, it's the same, the distress signals out here. People know that even pre-COVID, the other mob were struggling financially. God knows what COVID's going to do to them. And I've got Ashley wanting his money. Mm-hmm. They're getting strips made in Turkey, God knows how, because it, it's not the official custody gear, allegedly. But the, the distress signals out to the refs. Sure. And, the, you know, they're stepping up to the plate to help their brethren. Yeah. Uh, see, the, see, the thing is, you, it goes back to the old Jock Steen play that if the referee's going to give you nothing, 
then go out and beat the referee on the park because you know he's just their 12th man. And is that the Bertie Old famous quote? Is it Bertie Old? Eh? No, no, when he says to the ref, ref, what would you do if I called you a cheating bee? Well, I'd send you off. All right, what, what about if I just thought you were cheating? <laughs> <laughs> Agent Bolly Bombscare, welcome back to the show. Uh, every team in the league are hatchet merchants. This is an interesting point as well. Bar Rangers and Celtic, it's embarrassing. Oh, um, we seem to be coming up. We, we seem to be coming up against more and more teams like that now. As I said before, you come up against a side who defend and defend well and are very well organised and get a point. Then you can't really argue with that because there's so many teams out there that it's the only way they're going to get anything from Celtic or Rangers, and that's fine. It's all about. Organising your team yeah. and playing playing the game. Yes, it's anti football, but not so much anti football as booting um, a player like Frimpong all over the pitch. But it's because they know it's allowed. How are we going to handle Frimpong? You know, St John's didn't want to want to get try and get a point, try and win it. They've seen the previous nine games or whatever. They go, well, the refs will let us kick him. Let you know, he's going to go by him. The refs will let us kick him. What are we going to do? Well, here's a, here's a thing. You asked earlier on, Colin. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Uh, we're going into the the, uh, the Rangers game, and someone is questioned actually, and it's a, again a, another good point. Uh, Cardo sixty seven. What's the thoughts on Eddie today, and does he start in the derby? Well, I would start with two strikers. That I would definitely start with two strikers on the pitch, and I'm going to be bold and say that I would start with Eduard and Griffiths because I still think what we saw last season was so, so promising. Griffiths isn't going to play a full game. Eduard might not even play a full game. But to have a Yeti on the bench, if he's fit enough to make the bench in Clamalla, I think that's how we start I after agree. today. I absolutely I, agree with I, you. I would go with that. I mean, oh, Clamalla's it's got to be a, a goal every 30 on minutes. So, you know, if it gets to 60 minutes, Mark, we've not got a goal, just paddy on. You know, and he'll, he'll probably get tackled like that by Goldson, you know, and we know he can just get up and tuck it away. Do you know, just we're kind of watching the highlights here on Sky, and the, the, the flash pointed there, the Turnbull yellow card, which at the time we just kind of glanced over it being another tackle. I can bet any money that Chris Boyd's trying to talk him into getting sent off for that tackle because oh. the studs were quite high. But it doesn't surprise you. See, if it was a red card, that shows another reason why the referee was absolutely terrible today. And we're not just saying it for Celtic, we're saying it for St Johnston as well. The ref was just howling. Um, I, th- I think it's a bad tackle with Turnbull. He's, he's high, but his studs are... Um, and the player, if you're watching, he's mm-hmm. coming around and caught him. So I don't think it's a red. It's definitely a yellow card for him. Uh, no complaints. No complaints for anything. For I mean, any it, it, it's not the kind of standard attack on Paddy or Tim <sighs> Pong, is it? <laughs> you know, they're, they're completely different ballparks. There'll be plenty more to discuss tomorrow, Lawrence, on the Axon Bulletin. It's uh, transfer deadline day. So we'll hopefully, two signings. Morning and night. Morning and uh, night, we will uh, be on. Are we going to let Colin call the number of signings since he got the. That's on Nostradamus. Right. So yeah. I'll, I'll, go with, I'll go with two signings, both loan deals. Both loan deals. I wouldn't argue with that. Anybody going out other than the likes of Kundai Ben you and Anthony Ralston? Any right. first teamers? Uh, no first teamers, but um, I have heard that in the reserves, Grant Savory will be signing a short term deal at Morton. He played in a trial game against Livingston the other day. Um, I would be surprised if we don't send guys like Ewan Henderson, Jack Aitchison out on loan. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think any of the first team will probably depart if they do I have to think at this late stage we have to have somebody ready to come in to replace them we've been pushing for weeks for Roger and Griffiths to get back into that first team squad it happened on 75 minutes today Colin and uh, we're not going to take any credit we're just delighted that it happened we're now pushing for Griffin Eddie to start against Rangers um, and we agree with you the DJ of choice um, today's been brilliant it's been a wee bit emotional especially when uh, in the first half Lawrence and I fell out in the second half we almost cuddled each other uh, especially after the two last minute goals bringing back the uh, spirit of the centenary season Lawrence which we both enjoyed as youngsters uh, Colin Watt Lawrence Connolly he's been fantastic but I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today on a Celtic State of Mind hello thanks